Fast AF Designs Mystery Night has been a big question mark on the Sarah Super Series schedule since day one. A massive wild card in a series that's so setup dependent is going to be critical to this season's championship. Now, 30 drivers will do battle for 151 laps at a track they had little to no time preparing for. Or did someone roll the dice, get lucky, hit the jackpot, and guess that we're racing at Las Vegas? And not only are we racing at Las Vegas this evening, we are on the bullring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, one of the toughest racetracks, I think, to get down in a super late model. Welcome to Pit Stop TV in the virtual Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Andrew Carter, and the fourth, and it's a pleasure to join you for coverage of the Sim Auto Racing Association Pierce Fleet Super Series. Pierce Fleet Service Super Series, there we go, uh, for Fast AF Designs Mystery Night. Tonight's coverage is brought to you by Pierce Fleet Service, Fast AF Designs, and Whiplash Sim Cams. And it's a pleasure, as always, to be joining you this evening for some super late model racing with some of the best drivers to ever do it on the iRacing.com service. You see times now rolling in from warm-up. Drivers have set their qualifying order on the racetrack. Of course, there will be the top eight handicap moving around a little bit uh, when we get to the grid, but everybody is qualified and the field has been set. Looks like. Um, yeah, so we're going to have our 30 drivers for this evening. 151 laps. It's a long, long race. Let's take a look at this racetrack on the track map. Um, the biggest thing here is that it is short and tight, but also that back stretch is curved and it makes it really difficult getting into turn three. Turn two is not so bad. You have some space to open the wheel up and let the car eat. But as you bring it back into turn three, um, I've noticed a lot, at least in my few laps and of course my inexperience compared to these drivers, that it's difficult to get the car right down to the lane you need it to be on and hook around the, uh, the banking and the bottom of the racetrack. It's a really tough place to go racing and a really tough place to get down every single lap. We can take a look at point standings as well as they've evolved over the course of this season. 404 markers now for Alex McCollum at the top. Jacob Harbert's there in second spot. That is our first position change since we've taken over broadcasting, I believe, or at least close to it. Uh, might have had Ryan Kuhn and Alex McCollum, McCollum swap spots at some point, but otherwise, that's our first position change in a long, long time in the series. And now you see Ryan Kuhn is about to get swallowed up even by Josh Cottle. If if, uh, if Josh can have a nice day and if Ryan has any other issues, uh, Cole Cabry now into the top five trevor edwards still about that sixth position um i think cabry has been in the top five but some positions definitely shuffling around and it's all new drivers in the top 10 at least compared to last week if you look at seven through nine uh dustin mobberkett parker traves aaron johnson none of those drivers were in the top five or top 10 going into last week in the standings they are all now in the top 10 in this week's standings going into the bull ring well, the racetrack is hot and drivers are uh, getting their laps in, though we are going to talk to a couple of drivers first off because there is a team battle uh, taking place this evening. And it's going to be between the shop and the show. And we've talked a little bit about this to get the season going. We're going to talk to Trevor Edwards first because I feel like the shop might have a bit of an advantage coming into tonight. Trevor, you're representing the shop, at least in our current conversation, about this team battle. How much of a deal has it been to you guys? How much are you prioritizing it to make sure you get at least two of your guys towards the top of the field? Well, we're really excited because the shop and the show are the same team. We had to split them in two. So, like, Tonight's a win-win. It's a lot of uh, trash talk in the group chat all week, just messing with the guys. So really excited that we got both of our teams in the final. And so if you guys are technically under the same roof, just split into two different rooms, if you will, um, how similar are their cars going to be to you guys? How similar are, are the show guys going to be to the shop guys in terms of pace? They'll be identical setup-wise. They might make a track bar adjustment or something, but other than that, they'll be exactly the same. And how crucial is it to have this mystery night kind of shake things up? I mean, did you guys have the bullring on your radar at all? Did you prep here at all? Or is it just kind of going back to whatever setup you had last? No, we all uh, we all made our guesses. I, I think I guessed Iowa was going to be the track, so I was pretty far off. Uh, we love bullring, though. Bullring's one of our good tracks. And the whole mystery thing is awesome. I've been pushing for this for probably two years now just because it evens the playing field out for the guys that can't play out racing 20 hours a week, like some of these younger guys. So when this was actually put on the schedule, I was super pumped. And now I'm I'm really excited after seeing qualifying results and how this race setup's driving. 
think we have a, a damn good chance tonight. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, at least, I guess, in the battle between the shop and the show, it looks like you guys have three above the rest of them. I mean, Cole's second, you're fifth right now on warm-up, and Alex is seventh. I don't know where you guys are starting yet, but looks like you guys have some speed. Best of luck. We're going to talk to Aaron, and uh, definitely, uh, yeah, just have fun. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Trevor Edwards, he actually runs the, um, the shop's post-race show on Facebook that some of you guys may or may not have watched at this point in time. Um, we are going to bring in one, one more driver, kind of from the other side of things. This is going to be Aaron Johnson in Car 78. And Aaron, we've seen you kind of work through some of the midfield this season, but you're representing the, the show tonight, very similar to the shop, of course, representing the show in this team battle. How important has it been to you guys? Of course, Trevor kind of told us you guys are on very much the same setup, maybe a change here, a change there. But how big of a deal is it, I, I guess, internally? Uh, it's a pretty big deal for us, you know, going against uh, the big guys on our team, as you could say, but I feel like it's more like a David versus Goliath within the team. So we're going to give it all we got here, see if we can go out here and beat them. And Matt asked me if I wanted to do a couple of driver interviews here before the race, and I immediately thought Car 78 between the two teams, I guess between the drivers on the show, uh, you made sense to talk to because we've seen you kind of try to get through that top 10 barrier a lot lately, uh, going even back to the, the double header at Hickory recently. I, I very distinctly recall you trying to break through and just something bad happened every time you got going somewhere. Uh, how tough has this season been for you personally, let alone the team? Uh, you know, we I hit a little struggle spot there in the beginning, but now everything's just starting to click now and hopefully... We can go get us a win here soon. I just feel that confident in the car and the stuff that we got over at the shop that we can get it done. And clearly you guys have some speed. I mean, Keith Jeffrey is, is up the board. Spencer Dickinson's up there. Um, you're not doing too bad either. And of course, if you're working on the same setup as guys like Trevor Edwards and um, Cole Cabry at the top, Clearly, the, the car is capable. How do you make sure that you execute this evening at a track that is so tough and nobody really had practice going into? Uh, all about the night is just being patient and just take them one at a time. That's all I'm going to be doing. So, well, Aaron, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. You're good. I was just going to say, it's good to finally talk to you. We've seen the 78 car kind of milling around that mid-pack and starting to work for it as the season goes on. So best of luck to you personally and, of course, uh, everybody at the show as well. Hopefully we're talking to you at the end of the night. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Aaron Johnson this evening going up against uh, some of their, I guess, technical teammates over at the shop, the shop, the show, the show, the shop. Uh, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Anyway, they're battling, of course, within their team uh, respective conversations. We'll try to keep tabs on that over the course of 150 laps this evening. Uh, I do want to take a look at the Whiplash Simcams race details, of course. Everything's the same, really, for bullet points 2, 3, and 4. Same thing, actually. We've copy and pasted uh, most of the season. The only change is that race distance. And 151 laps here, we can take a look at the weather conditions. That's a, a long ways. Track temp at 86 degrees, and the sun is setting, so it's not terribly hot, I suppose, for Las Vegas. It could certainly uh, be warmer even here in March. Um, but definitely still going to take a toll. We saw these guys run 173 at Southern National not so long ago, and that definitely wore into the tires a little bit, but they were still running fast laps at the end of the race. So it's going to be a bit hit or miss. I think the tire certainly becomes able to run those laps later on, but it also seems like maybe, and this is just from my perspective watching these races and talking about them, it seems like maybe the tire starts to get a little more unpredictable as the race goes on and as you break it in and run heat cycles on it. So uh, we'll see how these guys battle with that, of course, throughout the course of the evening. This is, again, a tough place to go racing um, in any regard. And if we take a look at the schedule, it's going to stay that way the rest of the season. Uh, next time out, April 11th, we head out to New Hampshire Motor Speedway from one SMI racetrack to the next, just across the country uh, with Toxic Media Solutions. Then it's out to Slinger, which I, I still have no clue how that's even going to go. Out to Slinger Speedway uh, for April 18th with Pedley's Garage. That, that is going to be one, one tough day. Um, Oxford Plains checks in, Lanier. I mean, I, I feel like those are much more 
usual super late model tracks that you see on the iRacing.com sim. They've been on the sim forever, and I think these guys will be much more well-oiled, even though those are really tough racetracks. Oxford Plains, of course, no wall on the outside of the racetrack except for that front stretch, at least not right across the racetrack. You can't kind of go over the hill and into the grass, um, and Lanier is just one tough place. I keep saying that, but it really is a tough racetrack to go racing at, um, especially with that much more narrow racing groove than I feel like they have now at Caffeine and Octane Lanier Raceway. Warm-up is coming to a close. And... Actually, gotta let Matt Rolf know when he can uh, advance his session. But we do want to take a look around the field. There's a lot of really cool paint schemes in the field this evening. The one that takes the cake, though, I think, has to be Grant Brown. So we'll... Fire up the ticker and uh, let you guys hear the sound of the motors. This is going to be, I think, the coolest car that we see possibly all season. The 14 car. Really am impressed with what Grant Brown has done so long as he made the field. Yes, he did. Currently 26th in warm-up. But take a look at this number 14 car. Themed very much in the spirit of Mystery Night. Got the Driver Tees logo on the hood. And again, just one of the coolest race cars I think we've seen all season long and may see all season long. He's got it themed around, I guess, say a wild animal actually in his neck of the woods, literally, and just a work of art, really. Everything they do over at Patriot Media, um, really, really do respect it. Eagle performance there on the back end of the car. Grant, this is our kind of, uh, I guess, bow to you, I suppose. Really cool paint scheme on the 14 car this evening. And if we look around the field, we can find a few other drivers that we either haven't seen much this season or haven't seen at all. There's Aaron Avendroth in the field. And I want to say we saw him maybe at Irwindale to start the season off, but it's been a little bit. There's even Dylan Bates in the field this evening. Of course, uh, he's been in the field a few different times. We've seen a lot of the 91 car, but I think that might be a, a new paint scheme for him, possibly. Shane Williamson out there in car 53, same car we've been used to seeing uh, there, same for Kyle Meyer, Eric Tracy in the same old 66 car, although I don't recall if it had that logo on the hood before. Rocky Boyd on the race track, well, in pit lane, and just looking through, it seems like a lot of the same paint schemes. I think you can back from a short track league, but that one, oh, hello, Kyle captures uh, Rocket Eye Race Wraps. That's a cool one with the alien theme on the side. That's, I guess, perfect for, for this race for sure. Just a lot of cool paint schemes throughout the field, especially wanted to highlight that one. Uh, for Grant Brown, joking on Facebook that we need to start a, a best appearing contest um, specifically for the 14 car. You've got an alien there on Cameron Hamilton's machine. So, really, a few of these guys either had this contingency plan of a paint scheme in mind, or uh, who knows, maybe they painted it while in qualifying. Here's Ty Majeski, though, fastest in warm up so far. And car 98, while well, we're not getting data, of course, on where he started to finish because the race is not happening, uh, car 98 clearly has got some speed. I mean, he's clearing Cole Cabry by one one hundredth of a second, and that might not sound like a lot, but in a 13-second lap time, that is decently significant. So Ty Majeski, definitely worth watching this evening, as you'd expect. Cole Cabry, of course, already in the pit lane. Parker Traves, those top three doing well. Uh, then there's Kyle Eli out of New Jersey. Been fast all season, only about... Uh, You know what, I just realized, Matt even reminded me, this is actually a bit of a test session for these drivers to get laps in and uh, try to make sure they have everything dialed in. It, it's not a, just a warm-up. This is really the test session these drivers get. Um, I'm sure at least somebody in the field guessed maybe we'd go to the bull ring and did a few laps, but this is going to be a, a tough race for sure, I think, for most, if not all, of the field. Here's Trevor Edwards who we spoke with. Trevor in car 32, as he has been all season long. He's got some pace. He's only about uh, about a half a tenth off of Ty Majeski in terms of warm-up time. But at this point, you know, he's running 14 twos. Ty is running 14 ones. Now 14 two for Ty. I don't know exactly where these guys are at in their runs, um, but clearly he's got speed that can hang on and run up front. Of course, he has that win earlier this season at uh, 
at Nashville Fairground Speedway. There's Alex McCollum, a little bit behind the mark for once. I think maybe showing that uh, testing really matters that much for car number one, potentially. That or he does, just doesn't like the bowling too much. Rocky Boyd coming in to chat with us. Uh, car 16. Rocky, we've seen you a lot on the racetrack this season, which is a good thing. Uh, but there's definitely been a couple of moments where things have gone awry. Uh, a big crash at Five Flags last week. How are you trying to combat that and get some points to this evening? Um, yeah. We, uh, we just found out what track we were racing at, so we are just trying to get something put together and see if we can compete. But um, I think we got a pretty good car so far, and just hopefully we can keep it clean, unlike we have the past few weeks, and just keep our nose clean and bring home the best pace we can. Absolutely, and uh, Trevor talked about how much he likes this kind of idea, not knowing where you guys are going racing. Uh, where do you stand on that side of things? I mean, I kind of like it. It's a little bit different for us in the broadcast, but what, what's it like for you as a driver? Uh, I like the idea. I think it could have been, um, it could have worked a little bit better. I wish we would have, like, spun a wheel, like, 30 minutes before the race or something. Uh, just because, you know, like, some of these guys unloaded really quick. Which, I don't know. So, I, I wish they would have, like, spun a wheel live on Facebook or something, just so we, like, know everybody's finding out together and it's completely random. So, I don't know. There's, there's some flaws with it, but I, I, I do like the general idea, and I think it'll produce some good racing. Right now, you're a little ways down the uh, speed charts. In fact, the other 16 going by you here in warm-up. Uh, do you feel like you can work on that as the race goes on? Of course, no pit stops, no tire changes. That kind of limits you guys, puts you in a box. But do you feel like you can work on the tires throughout the course of the race and, and try to move up? Yeah, I just I got to learn how to drive the track. I've been uh, I've been doing so many laps for Road Pro. I actually just got done with Road Pro about 30 minutes ago, so I'm just not warmed up yet. And I'm not, I mean still working on trying to figure out the set so we're we're getting there uh and we'll, we'll see how it plays out well once we'll you get back to it only a few minutes left in warm-up uh best of luck this evening yeah thank you have a uh, have fun in the booth guys absolutely and rocky boy the third of course with his road to pro efforts this season has been kind of hit or miss i think he's missed a race or two but gonna talk to him this evening regardless before we go racing here at the bull ring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We might have a few more drivers coming to talk to us. I do want to touch one more time on weather conditions. As the sun is going down, we're going to see, I think, that track temp drop a bit more. 85 degrees currently, 75.7 in the air. And I think it's going to stay decently warm, of course, because this is a small racetrack. Cars are going to be on every part of it. It feels like for most of the evening, if not the entire race. Um, but... We, we should still see that kind of drop at least to a point. Upcoming broadcast for us at Pit Stop TV worth talking about while warm-up finishes up. It's kind of a, a rarity that we have this extra time before we go racing in the Sarah Super Series, but, um, oh, wow. We got the logos mixed up. I did that. You know, I prepped this graphic at 3 a.m. Regardless, ignore the logos. We're going racing on Thursday, April 7th at Martinsville Speedway. Then again, Sunday, April 11th at New Hampshire Motor Speedway with the Sarah Super Series, not the Icon Cup Series. Flip those logos around. Um, rookie mistake. Really is a rookie mistake. But then uh, Thursday, April 14th, we er, see, reading off the wrong one. It's Sunday, April 7th. We go to Martinsville, the Icon Cup Series. Thursday, April 11th. There we go. Uh, for New Hampshire, and then Sunday, uh, April 14th, we go to Texas with the Icon Cup Series. We'll just ignore that, act like it didn't happen, and let these guys continue on with warm-up. No drivers otherwise coming to talk to us. And it looks like Matt Rolf, uh, well, I guess he's on track. Car zero. He's even got a, a special paint scheme. Also one of the cooler ones for sure, and definitely themed. Uh, Matt, pat, a pat on the back for sure. This is a pretty solid one. A minute 12 left. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, no matter where you're watching from, let us know maybe who you're pulling for, especially with this wild card kind of evening, throwing these guys off a little bit. It seems like most of them are handling it uh, pretty well, taking it in stride. But definitely a couple of drivers struggling. Uh, Alex McCollum and Ryan Kuhn much further down the speed chart than you would expect. Traditionally, Alex in the seventh spot, Ryan Kuhn back here in eighth as he's pitted in turn three. Um, 
I, I'm not going to say they're necessarily going to be slow. I mean, it's still two of the best drivers in the series. But definitely an oddity to see them down this far. We work through warm-up and get ready to go racing. And they, of course, could also be on a race setup. Maybe some guys went and ran a quality setup um, just to get some lap times. Who knows? But it's very legitimate contenders ahead of them. Ty Majeski, Cole Cabry, Parker Traves, Kyle Eli, Trevor Edwards, Cameron Hamilton, all ahead of Alex McCullum and Ryan Coons. So that tells me maybe those guys are all running race setups and uh, all have pretty legit speed. It's going to be a lot of fun as warm-up ticks to a close. Three, two, one, and we're done. It'll be a fun night for sure. And we're going to get to see something we don't usually get to see. And I've petitioned Matt Rolf to maybe consider this in the future, if it works well this evening anyways, because we'll get to see these guys do the reshuffle for the top eight live. And we don't usually get to do that. Uh, we don't usually get to watch that sort of thing. Usually it's handled in the lineup between sessions, but this evening we have a chance to watch it happen live. So in conjunction with that, when we go through the grid here, we're going to be going through the grid by qualifying speed, which shows us something very interesting. And that is that Josh Cottle qualified on pole fastest time in qualifying this evening. So car 13 clearly has got some pace. Ty Majeski going to roll off or at least qualified in the second spot. Dylan Bates qualified third. Ryan Coon qualified fourth. Big time. A uh, note there for the 72 car. Qualifying fifth was Alex McCollum in the one. Cole Cabry qualified sixth. And then Matt Rolf ends up qualifying in the seventh spot. Trevor Edwards in the eighth position. So some big shakeups in that top eight. But I don't think anybody up here is, is unheard of to be qualifying up front. I think the only two surprises really are Dylan Bates and Matt Rolf. But I think they absolutely could qualify in the top eight any day of the week uh, we'll see them do their reshuffle here in a moment by points and we'll kind of watch along with that but through the rest of the field ninth and 10th kyle meyer kyle eli and these guys please find each other on the grid i feel like two kyles uh, they of course will not reshuffle daniel folds aaron johnson so on and so forth we'll let them all tick by on your screen as josh coddle does the shuffle he'll go backwards matt rolf gonna go forward and everybody will assume their position for this evening's 150 lap, 151 lap race uh, at the bull ring. So with this reshuffle, Matt Rolf will actually move to pole position. Car zero will lead us to the green. Trevor Edwards will begin this race from se second spot. Dylan Bates from third. Ryan Kuhn from the fourth spot and further back. I mean, you get pretty much what you would expect. Josh Cottle inside of uh, Cole Cabry on the back row. You've got Ty Majeski and Alex McCollum. One more time, just to note the Whiplash Sim Cam's race details. 151 laps this evening. Open setups, no change tires, as you would expect all season long. The top eight just did their points reshuffle. Caution laps do count, and I feel like that is the biggest note to make in this series. A lot of short track series, real or virtual, do not count those caution laps. You see Rocky Boyd's actually rolling off uh, caboose on the field. A lot of short track series, asphalt or dirt, uh, real or sim, do not count those caution laps. These guys do, and that absolutely changes the pace of the race. As the evening goes on, it means these guys have to be honest with each other, not bring out too many cautions, or they will sit behind the pace car more laps than not. While we complete these pace laps to get the race going, let's take a look at our partners with the series and thank them before we go racing this evening. 1-8 Coffee Company, Pedley's Garage Incorporated, Pierce Fleet Service, Race1Wraps.com, RS Center Trucking, Sarah Next Gen Templates, so on and so forth down the graphic. Uh, SimRapMarket.com, Susan Media, Studio 10 Wraps, Toxic Media Solutions. On the next page, you've got Boyd's Automotive, Crim so, uh, uh, Crow Sim Shots. There we go. Uh, Davis Chassis Works. And we'll leave these guys up as we begin the Fast AF Designs Mystery Night from Las Vegas. One lap complete, Matt Rolf still out front in car zero. Now usurping second place goes Trevor Edwards. Dylan Bates, though, up the outside wall. 
no caution, but car 91 goes straight to the back. Now three, four wide in turn three. Eric Tracy going to get tipped around. He saves it, and we stay green as Trevor Edwards is coming for that zero car. Turn three, lap three, he's on him, and I think we've got ourselves a battle for the race lead as Ryan Kuhn and Ty Majeski go side by side at a turn one. Majeski gives up one spot. He slots into seventh. You see Kyle Meyer, Kyle Eli fighting right behind. And Trevor Edwards still pulling right up to the zero car. But how much do these guys fight this early as Aaron Amendroff is off the pace? Car 65 is done. He's got no right front. He's trying to limp that car around. He's going to have leaders coming up on him here shortly. And... He will just get the car down to the inside as we've got a fight for the race lead. Trevor Edwards pulls to the inside, and that will be Matt Rolfe's reign at the race lead done for the evening, at least for now. But Alex McCollum, car one, he's already up to third spot. Let's see the field go on by Josh Cottle, qualified first this evening, and of course, the metric put him back a little bit. I think he started, what, third? But he is down to seventh spot in this race. And lap eight, of course, it's still way, way early as we've got cars everywhere in the back. Spencer Dickinson, one of the drivers from the show, getting back here and out of order. But as early as it may be for Josh Cottle, I would be a little bit concerned by him falling back to the seventh spot this early. Short run speed is, is certainly something you're going to want to have here this evening. I think we'll see some cautions later in the day. Uh, to, to have fallen back from third to seventh within the first five or so laps, it's at least somewhat a red flag as Matt Rolf, meanwhile, is doing the opposite. He's, I guess, not the opposite. He hung on for a little bit, but he's doing exactly what Josh Cottle did. He's falling back. Three wide back here for a moment with the midfield. Aaron Johnson, Cameron Hamilton, and more. Of course, we spoke to Johnson before this race began. You see Dustin Mauberkett in there as well and finally got himself a win this season. Then Parker Traves, Keith Jeffrey. Traves, newly in the top 10 in points. Josh Cottle now, I talked about him sliding backwards. As soon as I had that whole spiel, he actually got right by a time of Jeske for sixth. And now that uh, Bo Firebird is working up to Matt Rolf, who ended up starting this race from pole position. All this is actually, wow, right under the radar. Pass of the race lead, Alex McCollum, straight up ahead of Trevor Edwards in lap 14. He takes over the top spot. Ryan Kuhn who's been pretty much his, his main competition all season long, is back here in fourth spot. They are just about a second apart on the racetrack. But Ryan Kuhn in fourth while McCollum starts to drive away from the race lead. Keith Jeffrey falling back in a hurry. He falls back now to the 20th position. He started 18th, so it's not the craziest move, but he was up to 14th right off the start of the race and has fallen back quickly as there's contact now between he and Grant Brown. One car is slow and a caution is out for the first time this evening. It's Cameron Hamilton in the 10. And one car, like he was pitting, was uh, Shane Williamson, but Hamilton in the 10 car around, bring out caution one. Returns one and two, gets into Aaron Johnson, checks up, and Parker Traves is there. Really a clear cut, black and white kind of spin. Not a simple uh, of spin you're, you're going to get. On board with Hamilton, behind the helmet. Right down here in turns one and two, he's just going to get right to Johnson, kind of tip him around, and then right behind him was uh, the 60 of Traves to send the 10 car for a quick spin cycle. Wouldn't be too bad. I, I know drivers all the time on iRacing talk about sliding the tires and that kind of being the end of your day. Uh, I know that was a pretty significant slide of the tires there, but um, I think that's going to be a huge issue, truthfully, for Hamilton in this race. That was a pretty quick spin. 
Rocky Boyd in the pit lane. Ty Tyler DiVanzo also in the pits in car 97. He'll roll on through. Quick 3.5 second stop. I wonder if maybe was a quick setup change for each of those drivers. There goes Rocky Boyd. And Abendroth, we didn't exactly see what happened to him. He is still in the pit lane. I think we have time to check back on it. Give it a shot. Oh, you see the iRacing UI. We're going to try to get back here and take a look. That's when he went up and hit the outside wall. But how did he get there in the first place? Well, he was sliding into turn three and absolutely took a header into the outside wall. I think just a driver that hasn't been with us for a little bit. It's loose here to turn three. Easy to do. Boom, outside wall. There goes the right front right off the thing. Um, easy to do for car 65 as the field is going to double up and go back racing here in just a handful of moments. In fact, into turn three, Alex McCullum inside, Trevor Edwards outside, got ourselves a restart. Lap one off the restart complete. Cole Cabry slots into third nicely and easily, just like they were running under green flag. The real story is the mid-pack right now. Aaron Johnson gets the fence down the back stretch, and everybody's moving around. Everybody all over the place. Justin Laxton, a bunch of damage on the 53 car. Further up, we've got John Owlett on the inside of Spencer Dickinson. There's Shane Williamson in the conversation. Kyle Eli is starting to get moved around. He's actually moving the 13 out of the way. And just behind them, you see Kyle Susan moving up. That's putting Kyle Meyer on his back foot and bringing Daniel Fold through the field a little bit. The legend Phenom is now up working for 12th position. As everybody sorts themselves into some kind of position off the restart. Here you see Joe Schaefer, who got the win at Southern National Motorsports Park, going right on by Aaron Johnson, who we talked to earlier in the day. Before we got Racy in the 78 car, is down to 17th spot. Slip up here, Matt Roll from Time Jeske getting moved around now. Rolf has got to deal with the unsponsored 21. He's in an unsponsored sandwich. As he's got the Sarah sponsor on his hood. On board of Kyle Eli. Always good to kind of shut up for a second and let you guys hear the motor, hear what these guys are doing. But also just be able to watch from an onboard perspective for a few laps, kind of get an idea of what's going on for these guys behind the wheel. Uh, Kyle Eli is starting to go on the defensive once again as Josh Cottle pulls back up. It seems like these guys move around a lot off the restarts and to settle in, and then whoever lost spots starts to move back up through the field. And we're seeing that Josh Cottle down to the eighth spot and is pulling right back up on Kyle Eli. Even a couple of examples further back in the field I can think of. I do want to highlight this guy, though. Oh, he's going to throw a big block down the front stretch. But uh, Justin Laxton got a bunch of damage on that restart. Not sure what he hit, whether it was the wall or another car. Um, that is a bunch of right front damage to that 53 car. And I wonder if it's still driving straight. I mean, it's hard to tell with how much offset these guys have gotten the wheel, but definitely had a big hit. Further up, Spencer Dickinson battling with Shane Williamson side by side here as they will fight for 23rd spot. Dickinson will win for the time being. He slots in behind Keith Jeffrey and Aaron Johnson maybe having a problem. Is it uh, blinking or has he taken a DNF? I think Aaron Johnson's out of this race. There's car 78, he was just ahead of Kyle Meyer and Grant Brown, who we picked up and started watching. This is right behind Dylan Bates. And...
Not even a computer blue screen can keep us from catching the end of this Las Vegas race. It has been a challenge to get turned back on in time, but we are going to catch a restart here at the back end of the day, and we are about to go back green flag racing. Alex McCollum, the race leader, it's going to take a moment to get absolutely back up and running, but... Go ahead and enjoy the sounds of cars back on the racetrack, the sights of cars back on the racetrack as we're back racing a lap 99 of 151. Unfortunately, we did miss about a third of the race, if not a little bit more there. But as I turn the cross post back on to go over to the Sarah page on Facebook, it's always an honor to uh, be able to broadcast this series. Unfortunately, technical difficulties can get in the way at times, and it's been one of those seasons. But as we begin, or I guess continue on with 2024 here, it's still an honor and a privilege uh, Privilege as cars go for a spin again. Now, I did communicate a little bit with Jeffrey Souza about uh, what was going on in the race while we were away, and it sounds like there's been a lot of small moments that have turned into bigger ones. This is Justin Laxton. It's going to involve Parker Traves here in just a moment. Go ahead and watch through this. And we'll find out what happens down here in turn four this next time around as we should now be live back onto the Sarah page. It looks like the YouTube stream has been continuous, thankfully, as there's the contact that tips the 53 car for a spin. Um, unfortunate that Laxton and Trey is getting caught up in that, especially that Trey's is going to be involved. Let's go back and take one more look. And, well, we'll back it up here, and it's just Laxton, Trey's into the corner, Parker Trey's in the inside, and... It's just that was a lunge for sure uh, to try and get position on car number 53. But uh, under caution, we can just kind of take index of everything that's been going on, or at least what we know. Um, and that is that several cars are out of this race. Jim Cottle Jr. is out. Aaron Johnson's out. They are both marked as 106 laps down. I don't think that's perfectly accurate. Um, Aaron Abendroth is back in the race, which is good, considering we saw his issue right before we had the blue screen in the first place. Cameron Hamilton is in the pit lane. He is 24 laps down, unfortunately. Matt Rolfe has had an issue. He is some 18 laps down. Keith Jeffrey has just passed last week's winner, Dustin Montbriquet. They go over position 24, 17 laps down. Jane Williamson's out of the race and out of the session, nine laps down. And now Parker Traves drops a couple of laps down. So, uh, while the situation definitely is not what we want it to be, as missing half the race is a, well, half the race, half the race to this point is uh, obviously a big issue. We're glad we're back, and we want to thank all the partners with the series. 1-8 Coffee Company, Pedley's Garage, Pierce Fleet Service, RaceOneWraps.com, RS Center Trucking, Sim Wrap Market, Sarah Next Gen Template, Susan Media, Studio 10 Wraps, and Toxic Media Solutions, as well as page two here. Uh, Boyd's Automotive, Crow Sim Shots, Davis Chassis Works, DriverTees.com, Fast AF Designs, Hides Pride, International Short Track Association, Jeff By Junior Art, Justin Brooks Designs, and Matthews Design. Looks like we may be going to single file restarts. Some 45 laps to go when we take the green flag here in just moments. A big thank you to our partners with the channel as well with Last Sim Cams, ATVO, and CC's Business. Weather conditions as we get this back end portion of the race going. 79 degree track temp, dynamic, uh, the air temp hasn't changed much. And we are back green at the bull ring. Cole Cabry firing off nicely. It's still those three shop drivers out front McCullum, Cabry, and Edwards. Then Ryan Coon in the fourth spot. So as far as who is winning this team battle, clearly it's going to have to be the shop, unless something big changes. Kuhn gets the wall. I think Cabry got it too that time down the back stretch. So they both falter just a bit. Rocky Boyd, by the way, how about this? Into the sixth position as Spencer Dickinson is around and will tow out of the race. Spencer Dickinson in the wall gets tipped by Laxton. And unfortunately, that show driver is out now uh, for the evening. Justin Laxton came up behind him. This was his point of view. You can see Aaron John. No, that's Kyle Meyer just ahead. And uh, that happened real quick. It 
So Dickinson, it looks like, hasn't left the session yet. Let's hope he gets back on the racetrack at some point, but he has taken the tow. It'll be at least a minute or so before he gets back to the pit stall. And it seems like there uh, are definitely some frustrations throughout the field. Alex McCollum, meanwhile, continues to lead this race. Let's see, it looks like Data is telling us 22 laps led. We know it's much higher than that. He took over the race lead on lap 14. And I don't think he's given it up since, which means he's coming up on 100 laps or so led in this race. Single file restarts, now we're going to complicate things a bunch. We saw that restart, kind of everything spread out, as you would expect, with a single file restart. Which means track position will be more of a premium, and as we're down to 20 cars... Clearly it's been a challenge. I want to get one more look at the upcoming broadcast graphic, of course. Uh, we learned earlier that the series logos are flipped. The days are also flipped, but uh, imagine, if you will, for just a moment, that it does not say the wrong logo with the wrong picture. Basically, uh, Sunday, April 7th, we go racing at Martinsville with the Icon Cup Series. Thursday, April uh, 11th, we'll be at New Hampshire here with the Sarah Super Series. And then Sunday, April 14th, it's out to Texas with the Icon Cup Series. We've had better days for sure. We should get the one-to-go signal that time by. I want to recap the season schedule one more time. Of course, this was the big unknown on the schedule. Filling this in at race seven, it's a much clearer picture from here on out. New Hampshire next week, I guess next race in two weeks' time. That is going to be a unique challenge, to say the least, for these super late models. And it's out to Slinger, Oxford Plains, and Lanier. Into the restart zone, down here in turn four, green flag, back in the air, the bull ring. Back in the field, nicely single file as we complete that first lap off the restart, Alex McCollum. New fastest lap of what we've caught anyways since coming back from the blue screen. Cole Cabry just noticing he's got some right front damage that might be holding him back ever so slightly. I wonder if maybe that's from getting the wall at some point. Maybe he's knocked the toe out just a, a hair. Of course, it's certainly possible to get the wall hard enough to dent the body. Uh, you certainly could bend some suspension parts. Back here, Daniel Folds. This is somebody who was impressing me earlier on as well. He is working currently on the 13 car this would be for eighth position and we have not seen much out of daniel, daniel folds this season from uh, azim setup shop it's been a challenge for the 09 car to say the least among among other things it's good to see him up in the top 10 outlasting some other drivers this evening and putting a decent run together for himself a legend car driver uh, by nature certainly on iRacing that we've covered in the past thanks to uh, elite performance industries it's it's unfortunate that it's been such a rough season, but it's certainly fortunate that he's having a better run this evening. Just behind him, though, Pano DiVananzo and Dylan Bates are side by side. And Dylan Bates qualified up towards the front, started in the top eight, of course, with the metric uh, reshuffle, if you will. And it's been a rough day, clearly, for the 91 car. But he's back up into the 12th position. He went from the front to back real quick and is starting to work on the going to the front part once again. As our leaders have spaced out, it's over a second from first to third, no more from first to fourth. Joe Schaefer Jr., Tyler DiVananzo now side by side to work at a turn three. And Aaron Abendroth, by the way, this is an example of why you should get back on the racetrack even if you're laps down. He's 36 laps down, yes, but he's starting to pick them up one by one, just past Matt Rolfe and Dustin Mombriquet in the last couple of laps. And just by default, he's going to pick up some more spots and some more points. It's not going to matter much, uh, but it's, it's going to make at least some kind of difference as now Keith Jeffrey on the racetrack will pass. Spencer Dickinson, and into the pit lane comes Tyler DiVananzo. That might be it for car 97. Sure enough, the pull-down motorsports driver will pull down the pit lane and tow back to his box. Battle for third, starting to shape up. Ryan Kuhn on the back end of Trevor Edwards.
Not to say that it hasn't happened, but I can't recall many battles between these two this season. Of course, they're both longtime members of the Sarah Super Series and longtime iRacing short track drivers. They shouldn't be any stranger to one another here as Ryan Kuhn tries to move himself back onto the podium this evening. Been a challenge, to say the least, for Car 72 as of late. Bad race at Five Flags, a couple of bad races earlier on this season at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway and Southern National. Have Ryan Kuhn now more than 30 points, I believe. Run right about 30 points out of the points lead. I think it's 32 now. And he's down to third for the first time this season in the standings. other battles in the racetrack going to include uh, Joe Schaefer and Dylan Bates. They're fighting here for the 12th position. Jeremy Ashby working on uh, John Owlette. That's going to be for 14th. Josh Cottle, by the way, is actually starting to work here on uh, Kyle Eli. And I, I recall before the technical difficulties, these two were battling, um, I do believe. Cottle trying to work back through the field. It looks like he's kind of stagnated. The, the impressive part to me, though, is the, the car ahead of Kyle Eli here. Um, this guy, Rocky Boyd. We talked to him earlier in the day, and I don't know if that was his good luck charm or something. He ran road to pro at Richmond right before this race, and uh, there's not a scratch on that car. I know he gets a lot of flack sometimes, uh, but Rocky Boyd is putting a hell of a race together here. Top six. He's following a NASCAR truck series driver. That's a pretty good place to be, I suppose. Uh, following Ty Majeski around this racetrack. And that's not even to go into uh, Ty Majeski's short track resume, but Rocky Boyd in good company. He is going to have to hold off the 20, 21 and 13 cars here in the last eh, 15 laps or so. But sixth place, a solid day for Rocky as he works on some big points for himself. Meanwhile, car number one, clear sailing forward and back. He grabs the wall that time, though, down the back stretch. And he is pulling up soon on, that'll be Aaron Abendroth, and then it looks like the 88 of Keith Jeffrey. Both drivers many laps down. Abendroth 36 laps down. He's about to pass Parker Traves. And Keith Jeffrey is working up on Tyler Divananzo. That would be for the 20th spot. So certainly worth it for him. And Ryan Kuhn getting a little bit offline into turn one. Again, trying to find something here on Trevor Edwards, and it's not easy. It is not easy at all, especially at this racetrack. I mean, how are you going to pass with the uh, straightaways as, as short as they are, the corners as tight as they are? Pull up the, the, the track infographic. I mean, it's right at a third mile and a much different configuration to some other third miles that we might go to on iRacing. But here we go. Position on the 32. Contact. And Edwards going to have to go up the racetrack and try to defend now from the top side. Ryan Coons got that bottom position on him. And that is good for third position. Edwards now falling back maybe into the grasp of Ty Majeski. Majeski will actually get in line and let Edwards gather it up now with 11 laps to go. But car 72 putting himself back on the podium here late, and that's important for his season. I mean, we just talked about it, right? Uh, just went over his point situation. I wouldn't call it dire yet, but as the reigning champion, it's certainly not where he wants to be. Meanwhile, Ty Majeski might have something here for the 32. And from this camera, you can actually see just how much rear brake these guys are using. Look up underneath the uh, 32 car there of Trevor Edwards. Look in the corner right down there. You can see a lot of rear brake rotor glow. I mean, you see it there. A lot of rotor glow off this 32. And I think you'll even see it on Majeski's car. Yeah, down into the corner. I mean, you can see a bunch. Even on the straightaway, look at how much those rotors are glowing. Down into the corner. They just get warmer and warmer, and I know iRacing isn't perfect with simulating rotor glow, but it's pretty significant nonetheless when you've got rotors glowing all the way down the front stretch and back stretch as, as brightly as they are as Avendroth will now pull off the racetrack. Alex McCollum put him another lap down, and it's now four laps to go for our race leader. 
Looking to be the first multi-time race winner of the season. First repeat winner anyway. It was actually five to go. Now it's four to go. That one lap could mean all the difference, but things have calmed down certainly as he goes by Keith Jeffrey there in the 88. And Ryan Kuhn has found some long run pace. He's pulled right up on Cole Cabry, and I think he means business. Got right to the back bumper there in three and four as we take three to go. Trevor Edwards, though, packing back up. And this fight, I think, is far from over still for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Two laps to go. Popsicle sticks that time by two-thirds of a mile and counting now as Alex McCollum works down into turns three and four. The white flag is out at the Las Vegas Bull Ring for Alex McCollum just behind Cole Cabry, Ryan Kuhn doing battle. This is for second spot as they work through one and two. Kuhn's got position on the inside, outside rather. Cabry going to hold station down at the bottom as here comes car number one. Another race win this season for Alex McCollum and a drag race to the stripe. Second place for Cole Cabry. might be one of the bigger wins of the season for Alex McCollum as he'll bring it, bring it down to the front stretch. I don't think we'll see burnouts out of the one car, but congratulations nonetheless in order for Alex McCollum leading 138 of 151 laps at the Las Vegas Bullring. Let's take a look back as always and check our race results. Big day for Alex McCollum, certainly. Car number one taking a big win that is going to make a big difference over the rest of the guys that he's battling. He qualified, I want to say, seventh, maybe sixth or fifth, something like that, middle of the top ten, and didn't seem like maybe he had the pace that we would have expected, but he also could have been be focusing only on a race setup, not working about a quality setup, and uh, maybe that was it. But Alex McCollum on race win this evening. First repeat winner of the season. It's a big note. Cole Cabry, Ryan Kuhn, Trevor Edwards, and Ty Majeski complete your top five, meaning the shop has squarely won the team competition this season. Rocky Boyd, big run for him. Biggest day we've seen all season, uh, all season long so far for the 16 car. Kyle Eli in seventh. Josh Cottle, Daniel Folds, and Blake Thronberg complete our top ten. A couple of big days for guys there in the back of the top ten. I mean, Daniel Folds, Blake Thronberg, I think, uh, very much big days for them. How about Grant Brown? Best appearing, I would say, anyways. Uh, Grant Brown, 11th spot. Decent day at the office. Jeremy Ashby, 12th. Joe Schaefer, Jr. Back to his uh, more consistent ways. I know he still had some trouble this evening. He finishes 13th. John Allett, 14th. Dylan Bates there in the 15th spot. Kyle Souza, Justin Laxton. And then you get some guys who, uh, well, including Justin Laxton, had some rough days. Uh, Kyle Meyer, Eric Tracy, Keith Jeffrey, especially, 17 laps down. And uh, some big heartbreaks back here. Tyler DiVinanzo pulls off in that last run. Aaron Abendroth, he got all that he could back, but uh, pulls off in 22nd. Spencer Dickinson out early. Parker Traves as well. Jane Williamson, Dustin Mobberkat, Matt Rolfe, 66 laps out of the front. Jim Cottle Jr., Cameron Hamilton, and Aaron Johnson complete our 30-car field this evening on the result sheet. Alex McCollum, though, back to victory lane. And Alex, you're our first multi-time winner of the season. That's a pretty big deal when you're starting to put the points between uh, first and second that you are. You have 20, 30 points almost, and I'm sure it's going to be over that now. This has to feel pretty good, especially considering we didn't know where we were racing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of like the mystery tonight. I mean, made everybody work extra hard, but yeah, um... They were really good tonight. I, I, as soon as we saw the bullring, I'm like, oh, this is money. I, I, I always run really good here. So, um, tried some things tonight with our guys, and uh, it paid off. And it's interesting that you say you were excited to see the bull ring because in qualifying, it seemed like you were a little bit off. But at the same time, maybe you were prioritizing the race setup, not worrying about qualifying. What was that like to test in the race session? Yeah, so um, as soon as I saw Boring, we had a game plan uh, in our chat, and uh, I'm like, I'm going to test, do five laps in a solo test session so we have clean track, uh, no cars out there, just to get a good base. 
and honestly, I went through turn one. I I took a few ideas what we ran at Hickory, a lo couple places, and um, threw it at it. Went to turn one, mid back stretch, and I'm like, guys, this is money. So I knew we would be good, really good tonight, and uh, it paid off. You and and Trevor both, I feel like, have talked about bringing, or, and Ryan actually at Hickory, have talked about bringing different packages and things and seeing what translates between one track and another. And on the eNASCAR side, I feel like it's a new setup each week. But for you guys in short track racing, it's relatively the same thing each time out. How much can you actually carry over from one track to the next and evolve your setup maybe as time goes on? I mean, that's something you do in real racing, right? You, you kind of have, you have the same car, obviously. You're in that same box. And it seems like, especially at, at weekly tracks and whatnot, you kind of evolve over the season. How much of that translates into iRacing? How much of that are you carrying over from one week to the next? Uh, I feel like it helps a little bit. Um, but yeah, you're right. You kind of run the same stuff everywhere you kind of go on iRace. And, um, but with this new damage model, I feel like we're constantly changing the car. And I'll be honest, there's, I mean, our car's been really fast, but I've been getting a little bit frustrated. I mean, cars haven't been working how I kind of want them to. So I, I went to work on the weekend and, uh, I spent about an hour or two working on the car and I found a really good new package. Um, and I think we're going to be really good the following uh, races here. So we have something really good to work off of. And uh, our guys are going to be really good to follow. A couple of races left. I'll, of course, follow up with Cole here in a second. But it seemed like later in this run, right at the end of the race, Ryan found something, pulled up and got past Trevor. Almost got by Cole. Is that, uh, I guess, on your radar at all? Or is that really just driver tire man? I mean, all of us were on the same stuff tonight. Um, I know Trevor made adjustment before the race. I think he went down on uh, stagger a little bit, and uh, Cole ran exactly what I ran. I'm pretty sure all the other guys ran what I ran, but Trevor's made that one adjustment. Um, but with me getting the lead so early on, I was able to kind of, I honestly just rode a consistent pace the first little bit, kind of conserve my right front, my tires. And um, as soon as we kept getting those yells, I was like, oh, but um, and with that 30 lap run right there, I just went all out. But uh, I knew, I know next week Coons gonna be, or whenever we uh, race again, I know Coons gonna be really good at New Hampshire. So uh, we'll get to work and uh, we'll be good. That's up in his territory. Alex, congratulations. Another race win. Hard to argue with 138 laps led. Congrats. We'll be talking to you again soon. Thank you. Paul Cabry goes position number two this evening, and after talking with Alex McCollum, who finished ahead of you and helped propel you guys as a whole, Cole, what was the car like, and uh, do you think Ryan could have gotten you if there was one more lap? Oh, for sure, man. I, he was going to be able to roll around me, uh, no problem, and maybe even Trevor and Ty. I uh, I think I just overdrove trying to keep up with Alex, and um, I've learned in the past is if you can keep pressure on Alex, he'll, he'll fold you know, every once in a while. So I was trying my hardest to, you know, keep pressure on them. And I just, uh, you know, just cook the right front a little bit. Well, if you two keep tandeming up up front uh, and imagine one of these is going to have to go your way at some point, is there a track that we have left on this schedule? I mean, New Hampshire, Slinger, Oxford, Lanier. Is there a track out of those four where you feel like you can get a leg up on Alex? Uh, we'll have to see. I think uh, the shop brings good cars every week, and it just, you know, who whoever can get the invert. And, uh, you know, I think we're all pretty similar in pace. Um, it's so hard to pass in these cars, too, early on that I think any tracks are given for any of our shop guys. Uh, we all put a lot of time into it, and uh, we're all, you know, fairly fast. And, yeah. And of course, the buzz this evening about the track selection. We didn't know until we loaded into the race session where we were going. I mean, I did because I had to get the broadcast ready, but you guys didn't. How big of a deal is that testing in the race session, trying to figure something out, almost like it's an official race, just trying to get things done real quick? I think it's sick. Uh, it, it's just like, you know, real life racing. You don't get weeks prior to go test at the track and and you know get dialed in or it's just like the cup and or nascar stuff these days you know you have to unload and be good and it's kind of the same thing you got to load in the server and you know find something you have for a base and uh get to working on it in in the short time uh period you have so i think it's sick i think we should do it every week i was a fan of it it threw a huge curveball and it really showed who uh you know who puts the time and effort into these cars 
that NASCAR connection, very interesting. I like that uh, that point a lot. Cole, good to talk to you once again. Hopefully we're talking to you one spot higher here soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Really interesting point Cole made there, and I think that's a very valid argument going forward. But going backwards, one spot, Ryan Kuhn ends up in third position this evening. Ryan, a bit of a battle for you through that kind of mid portion of the top 10. Uh, what was the car like, first of all? Right at the end, that thing was a missile. I mean, right right at the end, that thing just it came alive. But, you know, it just ran out of time. Um, I'm looking back at lap times. I thought I had a lot, a lot more in it. And, you know, I felt like I did a pretty good job for not knowing the track until the session went up. So car was a missile um early on it wasn't that good we were probably a six to seventh place car start of the race but right at the end i thought we had a winning car so um you know proud of my guys proud of you know everyone that stuck with me and and uh, yeah it was fun definitely a fast race car there at the end bringing the fight to the guys at the shop um how about this next race though it's it's up in your territory up at new hampshire motor speedway uh maybe a, well certainly a big difference from anything we've seen this season maybe a bit in your wheelhouse maybe yeah i like loud and that's one of my favorite tracks um i feel like we got a pretty good uh big track package to go with uh, i already got an i already thinking of ideas what to go with but um i don't even know when that race is but next week maybe but uh and I, I feel pretty good about it. I like loud. The next two weeks, I think the week after that's Oxford. So a um, couple good racetracks coming up for us, and I'm looking forward to it. So we've got New Hampshire in a couple of weeks. Then we go out to Slinger, then Oxford and Lanier. And you, I think, were the first driver to mention this this season, packages with what you do in the front and rear of the car, even left and right maybe. And I, I asked Alex about it a little bit. Now back to you on this, obviously. Um, how much of that package, I guess, that you've been working on this season, whether it's front, rear, whatever, how much of that can you actually take to a track like New Hampshire, where everything's completely different, it feels like, uh, much higher speeds, much, much higher loads uh, on every corner of the car. How do you deal with that? What, what can you actually convert from, say, this evening here at the Bullring? Yeah, I mean, you can you could take some notes from here and, and uh, apply it to Loudon. There's a few little things that you know, I feel like you got to change for that track. Um, you know, obviously you got the speed, but it's it's really really flat. You know, it's 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 actually a lot less load than it's more load on the straightaway actually than the corners. The corners actually doesn't have that much load, which is good. So, um, you know, just you kind of got to set it up more like a like a flat track, more like a kind of like an Oxford, honestly. Um, and you know, kind of just go from there, kind of like Oxford. What else is what else is flat on Irish? I don't even know. I can't think of any of the top. Uh, Langley. Langley, yeah, Langley, kind of similar in that in that wheelhouse. So, um, I'm looking forward to it, and I think we'll be really good. One more note here, and Cole said something right at the end of his interview that I hadn't even thought about. With this whole mystery night that we've talked so much about, you guys load in, and it's like immediately just try to get up to speed. It's it's not that week or two week long prep period it's just go straight to work and try to find whatever you can obviously you guys have other setups and references you could use but he likened it actually to like nascar guys at this point with a lack of practice go out there get 15 30 minutes to, to try to get the car straight is that maybe a little more fun for you guys i mean i guess what's your outlook on that point in particular it definitely keeps you on your toes it definitely keeps you on your toes big time i honestly i was i was hoping it was going to be more of like an oddball track you know i was expecting like just something weird, which would would have been awesome. I would have loved that. Like maybe even like a road course or something. That would have been awesome. But I know that I knew that wasn't gonna happen. And I, I was down between three tracks. I was down between Sobo, Concord, and Bullring, and and my, my pick number three was right. But but um but like you said, you know, I had no notes really coming into here. I just kind of took the hickory set and changed about three or four things and that's about what i ended with and it was it was really 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 good so um made a good pick on that one ryan it's good to talk to you as always congratulations p3 hopefully uh you can keep this trend of less bad luck going for you i'll even knock on wood here for you thank you appreciate it ryan coon back to third place this evening really solid fight you can see it here actually uh where he got right to cole cabry this is the last lap uh, so we'll watch this through. This was impressive stuff from Ryan right here at the end to get up to Cole Cabry, bring the fight, and he almost had him around the outside of turns three and four. Uh, that's a whole lot better than I would have done, that's for sure. That's a really solid job there by Ryan Kuhn this evening. And 
uh, the whole field, really. I, I know there were some challenges through the mid-race, and I think some guys got a little frustrated, but from what we saw in between the uh, computer blue screen and everything else, it, it was a good race, and a pleasure as always to be here with the Sarah Super Series. Uh, here's a look at the rest of the schedule for the SARA Pure Sleet Service Super Series. Kern County back in January. May 9th, we go to Lanier to cap this thing off. We have four races to go, about a month of racing. Once we go back racing at uh, New Hampshire, at it's Slinger, Oxford Plains, and Lanier. And before we go, we are getting closer to that next event on the 1-8 Coffee Company National Tour. Here's a look at the series schedule as it stood uh, when we went to Hickory a couple of weeks ago. Still waiting on North Wilkesboro to get here and waiting to set those dates for Milwaukee and South Boston. Uh, of course, Milwaukee, I think that should be a super race. North Wilkesboro should be a late model stock race. I think uh, South Boston, well, of course, being part of the Virginia triple header, should be um, a late model stock race as well to go along with Langley and Martinsville. I think the rest are going to be supers, even at Slinger. Should be a lot of fun to watch. Just tune back in uh, when we get to that point in time. And Plenty of races left to go, no matter what you're looking for out of the Sarah Super Drivers. We'll, we'll keep this one brief, just because of the logo mix-up. That's a, that's on me at 3 a.m. this morning trying to get things done in a hurry. Um, but you can see where we're going. Just reverse the series logos and the days. Uh, it's going to be Sunday, April 7th, we go to Martinsville with the Icon Cup Series. Then Thursday, April 11th, we go back racing here with uh, the Sarah Super Series at New Hampshire. And then the Icon Cup Series is back on Sunday, April 14th at Texas Motor Speedway. That'll do it for us this evening from the Las Vegas Bull Ring. As scenic as ever, a big thank you to our partners with the series, 1-8 Coffee Company, Headley's Garage Incorporated, Pierce Fleet Service, uh, RaceOneWraps.com, RS Center Trucking, ne Sarah Next Gen Templates, uh, SimRapMarket.com, Susan Media, Studio 10 Wraps, and Toxic Media Solution. Of course, the next page... A bunch of other partners, Boyd's Garage, Crow Sim Shots, Davis Chassis Works, DriverTees.com, Fast AF Designs, Hides Pride, Leather and Sheepskin, International Short Track Association, Jeff By Junior Art, Justin Brooks Designs, and Matthews Designs. A big shout out to our partners as well, Whiplash Subcams, ATVO, and CC's Business, and that'll do it for us this evening from the Las Vegas Bull Ring. It's such a cool place to go racing, glad we got to do it here for... Uh, the Fast AF Designs Mystery Night, really cool day for sure. And thank you to In Audio, ATVO, Whiplash Simcams, OBS, and iRacing.com. That is it. Have a good night. We'll see you next time. Of course, for this series, it's back out to New Hampshire on April 11th. For the channel, we go back racing on April 7th with the Icon Cup Series in Martinsville. We'll see you there.